Benjamin Bloom will be remembered by educators for presenting the world with useful educational theories and possibilities. His legacy is embedded in many publications. One of those publications is the famous Taxonomy of Educational Objectives. Bloom knew that educational objectives lie beyond mere repetition. He strongly believed that talent can be developed in the many, not just found in the few. Therefore, he directed his research on organizing educational objectives according to their cognitive complexity. He wanted to provide university examiners with a more reliable assessment procedure by developing a hierarchy of objectives. Bloom's taxonomy is based on the idea that cognitive processes can be arranged into six levels with increasing complexity. If a student is capable of performing at a higher level, it means that he is able to perform at all other preceding levels. The cognitive and affective taxonomy were divided into the following categories. First representing the lowest and the last representing the highest level of mastery. Cognitive knowledge-based categories. Knowledge. The student recognizes and remembers facts, terms and basic concepts. Comprehension. The student demonstrates and understands facts and ideas. Application. The student is using and applying the acquired knowledge in problem-solving situations. Analysis. The student is breaking complex ideas into its components and understands their relation. Synthesis. An opposite process of analysis, where the student creates a structure from diverse parts to form a new meaning. Evaluation. The student presents and defends opinions based on the information provided. So Bloom's taxonomy is not just a simple classification, far from it. Bloom's greatest achievement was to order cognitive processes and later on emotion-based effective processes. Effective emotion-based categories. Receiving. The student is willing to participate in the activity and pay attention. Responding. The student shows interest and actively participates in the learning process. Valuing. The student starts adding value to objectives activities, phenomena, or information. Organizing. The student puts together different ideas, values, and information and compares them to form a reliable system of values. Categorizing. The student adopts a long-term system of values that is universal, consistent, and predictable. Bloom's taxonomy in its day was a revolutionary method for objective classification. Teachers use it in the design of their lesson plans and help students progress in the process of learning. It's also a powerful tool for assessment development as it helps you match your lesson learning objectives to any level of the cognitive domain. Let's look at the verb equivalent started with the highest level of thinking and see how to use them more effectively. Evaluation. Create. At the highest level of thinking, ask students to create original work using design, construction, comparison, development, investigation, imagination, and invention. Synthesis. Evaluate. Use the objectives in this level of the cognitive domain to motivate students to make evaluations, take a stand and justify their decision based on solid argument, critique, support, weight, verification and value. Analysis. Analyze. Now's the time for your students to find connections between the ideas through experiments, questions, tests, examinations, categorizations and comparison. Application. Apply. Place students in a situation where they can apply their knowledge in new situations and be able to use, implement, solve, demonstrate, operate, execute and interpret information. Comprehension. Understand. Encourage students to classify, locate, describe, discuss, identify, recognize and explain ideas. Knowledge. Remember. Make students memorize, repeat, list, define, duplicate and state facts and basic concepts. For ever more effective use of Bloom's taxonomy in your classroom, design activities that will challenge your students to move from the basic thinking processes to a higher, more complex level of thinking where they'll be able to evaluate and create. To do so, 
Try asking the right questions. Questions that will initiate thinking at a particular cognitive level by using the appropriate verbs. The original or revised Bloom's taxonomy is a powerful tool for developing learning outcomes. Why may you ask? Simply because it explains the learning methods. For students to understand the concept, they must remember it. To apply the concept, they first need to understand it. To evaluate a procedure, they first must have analyzed it. To get a correct conclusion, they first must conduct a thorough evaluation. Remember, you don't have to start at the bottom of Bloom's taxonomy and work your way up with your students, one concept at a time. Try taking into consideration the level of thinkers in your class and start from there. That way, both you and your students will enjoy the learning process. Let's follow Benjamin Bloom's footsteps and perceive education as an exercise in optimism and determination to fulfill human potential. Don't be afraid to push the boundaries of trying to make a difference. Start setting proper level-based objectives and never stop challenging your students. Criticism of Bloom's taxonomy. The following criticisms have been raised against Bloom's taxonomy. Ron Berger in Ed Week wrote, I don't assume that Benjamin Bloom and his team or the group who revised the pyramid necessarily intended for us to see these skills as discrete or ranked in importance. But my experience suggests that what most of us take away from this pyramid is the idea that these skills are discrete and, and based in hierarchy. That misconception undermines our understanding of teaching and learning. Learning is not a hierarchy or linear process. This graphic gives the mistaken impression that these cognitive processes are discrete and that it's possible to perform one of these skills separately from others. It also gives the mistaken impression that some of these skills are more difficult and more important than others. The root problem with the framework is that it does not accurately represent the way that we learn things. We don't start by remembering things, then understanding them, then applying them, and moving up the pyramid in steps as our capacity grows. Instead, much of the time we build understanding by applying knowledge and by creating things. Doug Lemov is concerned that the construction of the pyramid places knowledge remembering at the bottom of the stack, an argument that others have raised in the past. Lemov argues that most teachers see knowledge because it's at the bottom of the pyramid when Bloom intended it as its foundation. It's difficult to state an objective in the effective domain because they often refer to the feeling and internal processes of the mind and body that cannot be tested and measured in using traditional methods. Richard A. Santos, 